Okay, in this video I'm going to do the quantum harmonic oscillator or the quantum linear harmonic oscillator in one dimension and I'm going to show you how to write the Hamiltonian in terms of its uh, raising and lowering operators. So in previous videos I described the creation or annihilation operators which sometimes we call the raising or lowering and it said a plus and a minus as follows. So a plus for example is 1 over root 2y minus d dy. So if you go back to the very first video in this set, you would have seen uh, I did the short, writing the Schrodinger equation in dimensionless form. And of course, in order to do that, I needed to write the Hamiltonian in dimensionless form. So essentially what I did was I had the Hamiltonian operator was equal to uh, minus h bar squared over 2m del 2 del x squared plus the potential energy for a, a harmonic oscillator is 1 half kx squared. And I made the substitution that omega is equal to the square root k over m. So plugging that in here gives me the fact that we have omega squared mx squared. Alright, so then I told you that I, I was going to pull out the, the uh, zero point energy. And since we've, we've since seen the zero point energy is one half uh, h bar omega. So if you do that then of course you get something like this. You get minus h bar over m omega. Uh, there's supposed to be an omega there, del 2 del x squared and you have plus m omega x squared over h bar and finally then what we did was we made a substitution so we left basically this part here equal to y squared and this part here equal to uh, del 2 del y squared and we get the final Hamiltonian so we get y squared minus del 2 del y squared and we call this the dimensionless Schrodinger, excuse me, the dimensionless Hamiltonian. Of course, you can put this into the time-independent Schrodinger equation to get a dimensionless Schrodinger equation. But this, of course, is the difference of two squares. We could write this y plus ddy against uh, times y minus ddy, or we could write it y um, minus ddy times y plus ddy. And I'm not going to do it here, but we found that basically these two things are not the same meaning that these sets of operators do not commute. So in the case of the y minus ddy, there was a factor of minus 1, and in this case up here is a factor of plus 1. So basically, in order to write our Schrodinger equation, what we need, or a, a proper Hamiltonian, what we need to do is take into account that this here will, will reduce the energy by 1, and this one will increase it. So for example, we can rewrite the Hamiltonian in one of two ways. We can say that it is h bar omega over 2 times... Uh, y plus ddy times y minus ddy and now because if you multiply this together you get an extra factor of 1 there it means now we need to uh, we basically need to take away 1 here and separately you could also write it using the, the other well the operator is swapped so you have y minus del del y we have y plus del del y this time you have to add 1 Alright, so there are two ways of writing your Hamiltonian operator. Now, I've also said to you in the past that if you, if you look at your, go back to your operators at the very start, we have these two operators here like that, okay? So we notice we have this factor of 1 over root 2 there, and we have a plus, and we notice a plus and a minus. So if you look here, then in actual fact, if we have a factor of 1 over root 2 before each one of these, we actually have our, uh, we have our operators. So what I can do is I can bring this factor of a half in, all right, and we'll get it, we'll get that as follows. We're going to get the Hamiltonian. We'll say I'm going to go for uh, the y minus, so I'm going to go for this one here. All right. So what we're going to get is the Hamiltonian is equal to h bar omega outside of one half. Uh, no, not one, uh, one over root two, not one half. Uh, y minus d dy times one over root two. Uh, y plus d dy plus one half. Okay. There we go. Now this here. That's our raising operator a plus. This here is our lowering operator a minus. So finally, we can rewrite our Schrodinger equation. Let's check there now. We can rewrite our Schrodinger equation as follows. We can say uh, our Hamiltonian. Excuse me. I keep saying I keep saying the Schrodinger equation as um, a plus a minus plus one over root two. One over two. Excuse me. One half like that. All right. And if I did in a previous video, I showed you that this here, if we looked at that, if we went a plus, a minus on, um, on un, what you're going to find is equals n, it's equal to n times un. So what we call a plus, a minus, 
we call that equal to the number operator because that will give you the amount of, of uh, we'll say units of energy you are above the ground state energy so that's one way of writing the, 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 show, or the Hamiltonian now I'm going to show you another way of writing it and they're both, very, they're both um, they are both equivalent of course but I suppose one is easier to remember and one I suppose is easier to, easier to work with so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here to our operators now in another video I showed you how to write your um, your operators in terms of position and momentum so you're going to need to look at that before you look at uh, what I'm about to show you now so in that I show I, I basically showed you that a minus is equal to 1 over the square root of 2 m h bar omega outside of m omega x and this is a minus so it's plus i times p of x that's the momentum operator and I will say that a plus is equal to 1 over square root 2 m h bar omega and we have m omega x minus i p well say p sub x so that's the that's the uh, momentum operator and we have our position operators like that alright so I'm not really going to do the, the, the maths no, I suppose look I really may as well do it well I may as well do it so let's, let's do this right if we get a minus a plus if we actually multiply them out together okay now it's just it's just some um, it's just algebra it might be tedious but it is just algebra alright now you gotta remember of course that these operators do not commute so you just need to be careful in the order so in here we're going to have m omega x and we're going to have plus i times p we'll say and we're going to have m omega x minus i times p alright so I'm, going to, I'm just going to ignore the constant from now on right I'm just going to push through this just for the crack right so you get m omega x to be squared and then we have minus i times because that's the constant you can pull that out uh, you have that times uh, m omega x times p and then we're going to have plus i times m omega times p times x okay my, plus p uh, uh, p of x or p sub x to be squared that's um yeah that's p times x so i'll take away that just for just just for clarity all right so notice of course the only reason i pull out this i is because it's uh, it's a constant so you can pull constants you, the, the order you can move constants basically all right so I can rearrange this by saying that a minus a plus is equal to 1 over 2 m h bar omega outside of m omega x to be squared, that whole thing to be squared, uh, plus i m omega outside of p times x minus x times p plus p of x to be squared. Alright? That's pretty straightforward algebra. You just need to watch, we'll say, you need to watch how you're doing it, okay? And similarly, if we went a plus a minus, I'll uh, I'll do this one. I suppose a bit slower. Okay, you get the same constant out front. So a plus a minus. So let's put put the operators in the screen there. Uh, actually, we can't do that. Well, let's rewrite the operators. Okay, just bear with me one moment now. So I'm going to ignore the constants. So we had a minus had an m omega x plus i times p, and we had a plus was equal to m omega x minus i times p. All right, so that that will say that's they're both operators. So I, I suppose it'll be rigorous there like that. So I, what I want is a plus times a minus. So a plus. So I'm going to get m omega x times m omega x. So that's going to be m omega x to be squared. I'm going to have m omega x times i p i, I times p. So I'm going to bring out the i and I bring out the m and I bring out the omega and I'm going to have x times p. And then I'm going to have minus i p times this, so I'm going to bring out the, all the constants again so this is going to be p times x and they're both operators and finally I'm going to have minus by minus give me a minus but the two i's is also minus, so this turns out to be a plus we'll say p squared like that alright, so we can just rearrange this, it's just, that's, it's nothing difficult and I'll put in, I suppose, the, the, the full the constant again, h bar omega and we're going to get m omega x to be squared and we're going to have minus i times m times omega times px minus xp plus p of x to be squared. Okay? And you might say, hold up a sec, isn't that not the exact same as you wrote a moment ago? And you can see, look, it isn't, because there's a negative and a positive sign there. All right. Um, now, the rest, I suppose, is really just algebra, tedious algebra nonetheless, but just algebra. So, it's another bit of a trick. Okay, just bear with me now. It's another bit of a trick. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to add. I'm going to say we had we had a plus, 
a minus, and separately we had a minus a plus. And what I'm going to do is do the following. I'm going to have a minus a plus uh, minus a plus a minus, like that. Let's see what happens if we do that. All right, that's right, that, that's, that is correct. So, um, one second, I'm just looking at my notes here, seeing which one I really want to do. In actual fact, that's not the one I want to do, because uh, that's really of no use to us. It's not that one. It's, in actual fact, what I want is a minus a plus, uh, plus a plus a minus, like that. All right? Um, so, what we're going to get, if you put it together, it's pretty straightforward. So, you're going to get literally, and uh, so a minus a plus plus a plus a minus is equal to 1 over 2 m h bar omega. And I'll leave the algebra to you, but it's going to be 2 times m omega x to be squared plus 2 times p to be squared, like that. Okay, that's that's the operator there as well. All right, so let's just plug that out. Let's just, we'll say, um, let's just um, multiply that out, 2 and we get m squared omega squared x squared over 2 m h bar omega plus twice p squared divided by 2 m h bar omega all right nearly there now leave that equal to m omega x squared uh, well I suppose that's x hat to be squared divided by h bar and plus p hat to be squared divided by m h bar omega okay and like I said, it's just algebra. And finally, that's going to be equal to twice h bar omega outside of m omega x squared over 2 like that plus p squared over 2m. Now, hold up a second. If you were, I suppose, um, I don't know, perhaps paying attention, you'd see that, look, we have, you know, this, this looks like the 1 over the 0 point energy. But p squared over 2m is our kinetic energy. And when we did our dimensional Schrodinger equation, we found that this here is our potential energy. So in actual fact, all of this here is our Hamiltonian operator. All right. So what we can say is as follows. We can say that a minus a plus plus a plus a minus is equal to 2 over h bar omega times the Hamiltonian operator. Or, or if we want to go rearrange it, see the Hamiltonian operator is h bar omega over 2 times a minus a plus plus a plus a minus. All right, and that's another way of writing our Hamiltonian. I'm just going to show you something here. I know that these operators do not commute, but the following is the same. That's the same equation, and I'm going to show you that. But that's the last thing I'm going to show you. All right, so there, that's, we'll say, that's our dimension, or not our dimensions. It is dimensionless, of course, but um, this is, that's another way of writing our Hamiltonian. But just bear with me one moment and get rid of all the stuff here. So if you have, um, I haven't really talked about Dirac notation yet, but um, let me think how is the best way to do this. If I wanted to multiply, uh, I haven't talked about Dirac notation yet, so I'll quickly explain Dirac notation to you. Now, you don't need to be scared when you see this, okay? I'll explain, I, I'll explain it probably in another video. But just basically what this means is that we multiply this operator and we will say we pre-multiply it against this wave function here u or conversely we can post-multiply it uh, against this um, we know we, sorry we either operate it on this uh, this wave function or this wave function one or, one or the two but look I'm going to show you something that's equivalent this, this is the same thing so if we have the wave function and this operator like that and we add to it the wave function with the other operator that's the same thing. So the point of the matter is this: that this, this uh, will say that result is the exact same as this result. Okay. So when you have a plus or a minus in there like this, that it, do, it will say it doesn't matter which order you do these. So although a plus uh, or a minus a plus is not equal to a plus a minus. When you have them in this kind of form here, where there's an addition like this, you can actually swap, we'll say, the order in which they do, or which in which they're applied, because of this reason here. And yeah, that's all I'd like to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.